Hello everybody, this is Kage Naito, and uh, this is uh, me talking as post, uh, post-edit, after I've already completed the recording for the first episode of Cup Paper Mario Color Splash, and uh, this is just coming from the uh, loading screen from the Wii U menu straight into the game. Uh, turns out that when I recorded the first episode, uh, my voice was not recording the uh, sound program that I was using and decided not to uh, cooperate with me. So I'm going to let you watch the opening cutscene and I will explain uh, why I'm doing this now. Okay, so that was the opening cutscene, but uh, Nintendo's already showed us, but basically, uh, what happened. So, uh, when I first decided to uh, start recording this game, I immediately uh, opened it up and put it in and uh, started my recording. And was using a sound device, uh, sound window, that was uh, separate from uh, my uh, recording, my video record. And it decided uh, not to record, and uh, after finishing recording, uh, it was like, hey, uh, you gotta pay me if you want to save this file. And I didn't really have the money to pay for it, so I decided just to scrap the whole thing, but I found out after the, um, episode was over. And this is a completely blind run. I wanted to keep the integrity of the game and not, uh, go back to the beginning, and there's only, like, just one file, so there was no file select screen, there's there's nothing straight booting it from the game, this is immediately afterward. Uh, there was no cuts after this, I'm just going back over to, uh, give you guys a vocal, vocalization of what I was doing, uh, the game, uh, gives you a tutorial on how to play, and, uh, just make sure this is, uh, as blind as possible, because I didn't want to go back and try to do anything that I may have missed. Um, I do, however, go to the shop off-screen between uh, this, fir this first video and the second video, and uh, I also say that uh, the first episode is voiceless, which, to its credit, is the first episode, but it, because it's 40 minutes long, that would have been just 40 minutes of straight gameplay, uh, no vocals, no uh, understanding of what's going on, and I like that animation. Um, so, this is me just screwing around a little bit, getting the, uh, controls of everything, with Peach and Toad following me. Um, really not much to say here. Really not much to say here, other than, uh, this is the game starting off, giving you basic run data of how everything goes. So now that I've got a hammer, I go uh, run around and start whacking stuff because it's fun to whack stuff. And taking the coins within. Um, so other than that, uh, this is 
Gonna be a completely blind playthrough. Uh, I'm not gonna have any ideas. Any, uh... I don't know where any of the secrets are. This is just me exploring <clears throat> and, getting a and getting a basic understanding of how the game works. The first episode. Strictly requires the gamepad to be played. Um, nothing other than... Nothing, no other control uh, panels can be used. Control schemes. So it's just the gamepad for a specific reason. I'm not going to be able to tell you what the game tells me on the gamepad because uh, I've already passed it and I have no way of going back without deleting all of my progress. And I've already made four videos and that's a lot of progress lost. So this is me looking for the three switches. And based on their color, I have to use one of three actions. So this is the blue switch, which you hit with the hammer. switch in the back and I'm going to go hit that by jumping. And I'm currently looking for the yellow switch. colors of paint. This game's gonna have a lot of paint puns. to be uh, modest about the relationship.
So what Toad just handed me more battle cards. And what bothers me is they didn't stop them from doing that. But... Paint for battles. And I really like the puns in this game. So basically your first battle. And uh, Kiwi's gonna tell you what to do on the gamepad. Unfortunately, I can't show you what happened because I have no way of recording a gamepad, as you uh, probably know. But Kiwi's basically telling me uh, that you can fill up the cards with uh, paint in order to power them up. Uh, attacking with a blank card will severely weaken its power while filling, uh, filling paint in your cards will increase their power, but also use paint, which you can get by hitting uh, various objects in the world, but also by defeating enemies, so uh, don't feel shy about smacking um, anything and everything. <laughs> and I like the, sh I like the shy guys uh, talking smack and also giving you some encouragement at the same time, which is kind of funny. Um, so at least you have... At least you have that to look forward to. And, and just watch them just talk while I'm getting a tutorial on how to fight. <coughs> and I'm choosing cards, and what I selected will be shown right on the top left corner of the screen after Huey finishes talking. And I can't show you what he's saying. I honestly don't remember. Basically, it's a tutorial for slight scratchy, so if you want to look it up, you can, probably. But there's no way of me recording my uh, Wii gamepad footage without, without uh, a separate camera, which I can use at the same time. Like any other Mario RPG, successful action commands can increase your damage. So I still have one card slot. You can't get more unless you progress through the story, which is different than Paper Mario Sticker Star, because you can uh, just play a roulette wheel for coins and try to get more, which is different. But I like this battle system a little bit better, because they have more cards to attack different enemies, and multiple enemies.
So you see my uh, paint meter at the top left corner after this cutscene, I mainly used red and yellow to power up my boot cards. So I'm less than half on my uh, red color. I'm about a little over half with my yellow. basically hitting objects in the world, you basically get that color that they uh, create. So hitting the tree will give you green, which is blue and yellow. Gathering orange is red and yellow. So my max is 100 points of uh, paint. Just go explore through the world and see what I can find here. Uh, the game automatically uses paint colors based on what you're hitting. So uh, a blue flower will produce blue paint when you swing your hammer. Uh, a red red flower will use red paint. A red toad will use red paint. The game already knows what color that you use, so you don't have to worry about selecting the color combinations because the game will automatically do that for you. actually eats tuna fish with ketchup. So that's kind of gross. So, this is the time where you uh, take a moment and explore the town and just fill the uh, colorless spots with the necessary paint. And anything that you fill with paint, you can immediately rack, I'm sorry, whack, to get a refill on paint. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't able to figure this out until the next episode. At least to fill up my red. Saving the toads, I try to uh, refill the paint spots as best as I can with the amount of paint that I have, which is started off, which started off to be a lot limited. But as you fight enemies, they drop uh, ways to increase your paint. Fighting battles is excessively important in this game because if you don't fight battles, you're not going to be able to extend your paint, and you run you run out. And if you don't have any paint for battles, you can't fight. It's kind of like sticker stock in that regard. You still have battle cards, but they're excessively weak without the necessary paint to paint them. For a couple of seconds of you using them, and you can use them again for more paint if you need to. It's really easy for me to miss the colorless spots on lighter colored surfaces. But I try to do the best I can with uh, what I can see. I also had some friends helping me point this out. Shadow Rose, who you probably come across in my uh, Resident Evil video, she was also watching me. And I also had an another friend that you will hear in the next video, and he, he goes by Flem. The first episode is just going to be me ex basically exploring around the town, filling up the spots as best as I can. And just getting a feel for the controls and how everything works. Basically, understanding myself, getting myself um, accustomed to the mechanics of the game. While at the same time, just getting the coins. And figuring out what I can find that could be useful in this early portions of the game. So and there is the dojo, which I haven't used yet, but I'm guessing it helps you practice with fighting battles. work always as they do. And uh, that blue sh that blue toad head is the uh, card shop. really adamant about him 
uh, helping us when I have a general idea of what we need to do. I really like the, uh, the banter in this game. It's really, it's really entertaining to me. So basically I'm going back into the menu, picking a card, painting the card, which is this sound effect right here. That's me selecting the card. No, I already selected the card. And, uh, it was already painted. We get... Oh, I missed the... I missed the action command. So, you, uh, have two types of cards. Unpainted and painted. When you select a painted card, you don't have to put any paint into it. And they are... They tend to be more powerful because they're already fully painted, but at the same time, more expensive. So if you want to buy them from a the shop, there's... They're usually... Uh, a certain percentage over the uh, unpainted card. So collecting more hammer scraps will increase your paint capacity, which is the only way to get them is through fighting battles. So, uh, the impo importance of fighting battles is a lot more, um, emphasized in this game rather than Paper Mario Sticker Star. Because, in Sticker Star, you could just avoid enemies all day and not have any negative side effects, because they were all just stickers. Uh, in this game, you need to fight in order to increase your paint capacity, and having more paint is probably going to help you out in the long run. A lot more than uh, having no paint. So something has stopped the water wheel from working. And I go and I went ahead and called Kiwi to help me figure out what I need to do. And he didn't really tell me very much, so I continue on with my... with my search. shy guy that you can sneak up on. And he tried to drink me. defeating enemies, they also drop paint. And the rainbow paint is filling, uh, is used for filling all paint colors, because it's a rainbow. Red fills red, purple fills red and blue, uh, yellow fills yellow, orange, feel, orange fills yellow and red, and so on and so forth. So, finding rainbow is very good. Whacking it over and over again just to fill up my red, just to be sure that I have enough red because this area requires a lot of red. And 
it's also hard to pinpoint where exactly in three-dimensional space I'm hitting walls when it's that far out. So, uh, this is me trying to figure out the next step from what I can, from what I understood. We need to find a way to move that, which is toilet paper, and I thought it was uh, a blank, uh, spot, which is, which it wasn't. So that's why you saw the different random colors, um, being splashed all over the place. And when enemies, and enemies will try to, uh, surprise you from time to time. If you manage to get a first strike, like I did, you get a free attack, a free jump, but you can't uh, use action commands to power it up, as far as I know. And uh, you can also hammer enemies. You can also oh, you can also hammer enemies, which does just as much, but you also can't power that up either. Uh, so, as far as the, as far as the game's music is as far as the game's music goes, I like it. It's, uh, it's very nice and uh, pumpy. And the game will stop you once you've conducted enough hammer parts to fill up your hammer. And your paint is maxed. The max paint is increased, it, it's refilled, and you can hold more paint units. And I won't be using as, as much red as I did before. So, uh, me using the paint is, is, as you can tell, it's not decreasing as fast as it did with the, uh, 100 point, uh, hammer. So, fighting is definitely important. This bungee jumping doesn't sound like a good idea. And so I'm over in the yellow district trying to figure out what I need to do next, as well as exploring my options. And this is what happens when you get caught by surprise. They get the first strike, which totally negates your ability to get it perfect in battle. So, if you manage to strike the enemy first or not, uh, and finish the battle in one turn, you get a perfect bonus. And getting a perfect bonus will result in you getting more coins, and that's pretty much it. Just getting more coins, which the coins are always good. Thank you. 
So this is the first <clears throat> first few minutes of the game, which has a lot of talking and exposition in order for you to get your get your leg, in, your footing, which is good. And, it, and it's always good in the Pink Mario game. You always got to be aware of enemies that are trying to uh, sneak up on you. So I'm gonna be selecting, I think, a multi-hit target here, uh, a multi-target attack. Hammers can hit multiple targets if you time it correctly. And as they get tired, they get weaker. Still take a, I take a little while to get used to the uh, action command for the hammer, which is a little, which is a little tough to, to, to pinpoint. So I just finish him off with a simple stone. As Huey has already stated, when something loses its color, it stops working. So I take the opportunity and smack him with a hammer. Now the Slark guys are uh, a special type of enemy that can heal themselves. Um, I'm not going to tell you what exactly they do, that's going to be uh, in a future episode. So, uh, that gives you guys an incentive to watch things. I want to, uh, once again, uh, mention that, uh, I, I'm doing this solely for, um, integral purposes to make sure that, uh, you guys don't miss anything. Because, uh, me going back and finding things that I've already missed in my original playthrough because I've already gone through, like, four levels, uh, wouldn't be fair to you guys. And I want to experience, uh, I want to experience this playthrough start to finish as, as uh, somebody who's playing it blind. Uh, I, I want to I do that for you guys. This is, this is for, me, for me to you. I really like the water effects in this game. I love, I love the paper effects are looking, looking like real objects. Um, I love the music. I love the gameplay. I've only played four stages so far. And I absolutely love everything about this game. I really like it a lot more than paper st uh, Sticker Star. Which I also enjoyed because the music in that game was great too. And now that the toilet roll is open, the uh, stage music resumes its happy, bouncy, uh, Italian-like flair. It feels like something that you'd be listening to if you were in Italy. Specifically from this instrument right here, which is really nice. It's a really nice touch because it feels like you're somewhere like Venice. Shadow Rose has been to Italy, I'm not sure if she's been to Venice, but she's seen the Colosseum and all that fun stuff. So, uh, this is the end of the first episode. In the next episode, uh, I'm able to, uh, I was able to figure out what went wrong with this first one. So my commentary is live. Uh, you will hear Shadow Rose and my buddy Flem uh, in the background from time to time. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. I hope uh, you guys continue to watch me and uh, experience this game with me as uh, I as I do um, as I as I play it and unlock things and learn things about the game. And uh, the end world bonuses, I believe, is based on how many battles that you've successfully fought. So you get more coins, paint, and all that fun stuff. And this is the world map. So when you find a new star, it'll take you to that new spot. And tape comes out and connects the connects the world. So as you can see, there is nothing here. There's only two places. 
Uh, I've restored 49 colorless spots in this area. Um, the episode ends, I go back in, I go check the, uh, the shop, and I also find some other colorless spots that I missed that were just staring me in the face that I didn't look at the first time. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this first episode. I hope you are enjoying it as, as much as I am, and I will be sure to not let this happen again in the future. I have four other episodes um, already in uh, production, so I will upload those as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next part.